Edge computing for more intelligent data. The digital revolution is quickly pushing the physical world to the limit. The proliferation of sensors, Internet of Things devices, and myriad other data sources have put a significant burden on our existing IT systems. These systems simply can't keep up with the demands that are being placed on them, and they risk becoming bottlenecks in a digital world where data is king. You're watching YouTube channel. Let's get techie. In today's video, we'll discuss the need for new ways to compute that are capable of keeping pace with our data needs and capable of processing data at any location, anywhere in the world. So make sure to watch the video until the end. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will not miss any future videos we upload. Well, edge computing is a concept of distributed computing that places compute and data storage in closer proximity to the locations where data is generated. It is anticipated that this would decrease reaction times while also saving bandwidth. It is more of an architecture than a particular type of technology. It is a type of distributed computing that is sensitive to both the topology and the location. The concept of edge computing may be traced back to the development of content distribution networks in the late 1990s. These networks were designed to provide web and video content from edge servers that were situated in close proximity to end users. In the early 2000s, these networks progressed to the point where they could host applications as well as application components on the edge servers. This led to the development of the first commercial edge computing services which hosted applications such as dealer locators, shopping carts, real-time data aggregators, and ad insertion engines. Edge computing may be illustrated with the help of the Internet of Things. There is a widespread misunderstanding that Edge and Internet of Things are interchangeable terms. Edge computing is an IT architecture in which data originates at the edge of a network, where it is parsed and then pushed back to the central server for processing. It is especially useful when connecting two networks with different capabilities or conditions, such as one high bandwidth connection and one low bandwidth connection, or when connectivity between networks becomes unstable. Edge computing has grown increasingly crucial as a result of the growing significance of data in today's modern businesses. This is because data has to be easily available in order to provide real-time control over vital business operations. Today, there is an abundance of data all around us, whether it comes from wireless sensing equipment or Internet of Things devices that operate remotely. We are continuously acquiring seas of data. That's why edge computing is something that must be used immediately if you want your business to be successful. This virtual flow of information is not only making the transmission of data simpler and more affordable than it has ever been, but it is also altering the way in which organizations conduct computers. Building an expensive central data center with everyone's internet connection was the traditional model for using data. However, the traditional model has become unfeasible because there are so many different sources that require access to a specific piece of information. This has caused the cost of this model to skyrocket. In addition to bandwidth restrictions, latency problems, and unpredictability of network outages, it becomes too much of a nuisance to store unlimited quantities of data, even if one is able to figure out how to access it again. In response, businesses developed architecture for edge computing, which involved shipping expensive computers off-site rather of transmitting raw data to the company's server farm, which would have been more expensive. Now businesses are able to make use of their own resources, which are situated in close proximity to the individuals who create them, whether those resources are located in stores, factories, or power plants. Now this can be frustrating, but if something were to cause delays in a self-driving vehicle, then it could lead to death. Likewise, with modern edge computing architectures where you place computational power closer to the sources of data, or routers, wide area network devices, and Internet of Things devices. Then it means the device will transfer fewer data over long distances, while at the same time having access to more resources locally than if they were just up in some remote cloud infrastructure. This kind of architecture 
also helps reduce resource strain since we are processing data locally and only sending information that is worth anything remotely. For example, a smart thermostat will only send information when the temperature has changed from what was already set. Similarly, a security camera will only send information when there is movement detected in front of it. Edge computing has many benefits including shortening times for actions and responses, having less downtime, preserving network resources, reducing data congestion, enabling high-speed 5G mobile networks. Edge computing isn't really going to replace cloud services either, though there are some drawbacks too. Security challenges exist because of its distributed architecture, more potential points of attacks. License costs could go against initial cost savings, depending on how often they're used and how much they cost. You can just buy one license per product. Configuration challenges also exist because different software needs to be installed onto each individual edge device, or you run the risk of creating security flaws over time. Thus, edge computing is reshaping IT and business. It offers an innovative take on cloud applications, but you need to understand what it means for businesses before you make the jump. With edge computing, it's all about location. Traditional enterprise computing begins with data being produced at a client endpoint, such as a user's desktop computer, which is then transported over a wide area network such as the internet, and then through the corporate LAN before finally being stored and processed by an enterprise application. The resulting work is then relayed back to the original client endpoint. This approach has long been seen as a successful model for client-server computing when dealing with typical business applications, but the number of devices hooked up to the internet and the amount of data they produce is growing at an alarming rate. By 2025, it is predicted that 75% of all company-generated data will come from sources outside centralized data centers. In this time when everything seems so dependent on fast, efficient connections, it's never been easier for things to get bogged down in traffic or even just simply dropped off in some cases due to lack of space. So, IT architects have switched priorities from the central data center to what would essentially be the edge of the infrastructure, bringing storage and compute resources away from a centralized data center. So they're near where their jobs are needed. It's straightforward. If you can't get data closer to your home base, then bring it back home. This idea is rooted in decades-old concepts like remote computing, ACA placing resources at an office or another business location instead of relying on one centralized computer server. Edge computing puts storage and servers close to the data, usually requiring just one or two racks of gear in order to operate remotely. This could make it easier for them to protect themselves against things, such as extreme temperature changes and atmospheric pressure so they don't fail. Computers analyze the data before sending any results back to the main computer, which means that they're able to work more efficiently without stopping every five seconds so they can send a new result back. Intel reports that the devices that use edge computing are designed to minimize latency and maximize data speed. With Internet of Things, time equals money. This is true even for other sectors. As Moore put it, with mobility, there's no more need for that case of your laptop or a pad and a spare battery. All those things need to go into a phone. The concept of business intelligence is so vast, it can vary wildly in its definition. One example could be a department store that has surveillance footage taken from cameras on the floor along with receipts to calculate what merchandise would sell best, or how many consumers came through during a certain time period and what they bought. Another example could lie within predictive analytics, which would predict when an appliance will break down before it actually happens. Yet another usage could coincide with utilities such as power plants or water treatment systems to make sure everything operates correctly so the product doesn't diminish in quality. This way efficiency stays at optimum levels. That's all for today's video guys. What do you think of today's video? Tell us your views in the comment section. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. See you in the next video. Until then, 
best of luck.